When the calendar turns to February, drivers, tuners, and fans of the Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series begin California Dreaming. It's time to kick off the 2015 season, and the excitement level is off the charts here at Auto Club Raceway, Pomona, California. Another Swede you mentioned, the number one qualifier is Yanni Lindbergh. The second time he's done that. Career best numbers, the 12th driver in the 540s. Lombardo with 548. That was good enough for Lane Choice until that run. 5.445 seconds. That's solidly in the top 10 runs all time. Yanni Lindbergh has had a tough weekend. They've heard some stuff. We'll talk about that later. Here's the way they'll match up in round number two. For the 35th year of racing in top alcohol dragster and top alcohol funny car, this is the 582nd race in class history with the inaugural champions still very much a part of the series. That's right. Jerry Darren won the first race. Top alcohol dragster tuned Megan McKernick to some 520s this weekend. And how about Bad Brad and Anderson, former champion of the class, Bill Cylinderheads. Go talk to John Lombardo about qualifying. He'll tell you his team made a little bit of a hiccup. Didn't want to find himself in this position, coming out of the eighth spot with a 540 race car, but taking on the other 540 race car here this weekend. You better get out in front of my eighth mile, because that Yanni Lindberg is known for running huge speeds, both over in Europe and the times that he's been here. The number one qualifier coming in off of that 544 performance. Now, round one was run yesterday. Conditions were a little <laughs> bit cooler, so I don't expect to see another 544 out there, but it wouldn't surprise me at all to see that car run 49 or 50. That guy spoke to Yanni Lindberg. He said he really wanted to finally go in the 540s here in the States. He's done it in Europe, but people sometimes don't believe what happened happens in other parts of the world in terms of the setup, the car, some of the parts, but Yanni proved it here, and he's very proud to be the 12th guy to go in the 40s. That is a bad, fast car. It's been interesting, too, watching the reaction times. First pair was 21 to 22. Second pair was 61 to 62. Third pair was 90 to 100. So nobody's had a huge advantage on the starting line. But well, let's see if that changes in this pair. It's the right place. Way. It's the right time kind of sport. Three stage beams. Bring the RPMs up, pump them in, turn on the stage beam. Eventually, Left lane, 0-10 on the reaction timer. That's oh, all Yanni's going to need. How did that car not blow up? We're going to watch this again on replay. There's a fuel line that comes off on the injector. It is spraying fuel all over the windshield. When that happens, they almost always lean out, run out of fuel, and backfire. Somehow, Yanni Lindbergh got it to hold together. 551 beats a 552. What, are you kidding me? Watch for the fuel right at the windshield. Right there, there it is. Whew. Got away with one, did Yanni and the team at the starting line celebrating. Probably don't realize just how close that was. John Lombardo just ran 552. He would have beat Jay Payne. He would have beat Nick Janowick. He would have beat Brian Haug. He wasn't racing them. He was racing Yanni Lindbergh. That's the only car in this round that that 552 wasn't good enough to beat. To the top end we go, John Kernan. Yanni Lindbergh moving on to the semifinals here at Pomona as we open up the Lucas Oil drag racing season. And Yanni, how worried were you when you saw that fuel line break right before your eyes? Yeah, like I uh, blew the engine up in the qual last qualifier, so I was pretty worried. So I left a little early, but uh, what the heck, we took the win and, uh, you know, with good companies that support me like Redline Oil and Manton Rocker Arms and Push Rods. And yeah, I can thank everybody that supports me, like good tire tattoos here and yeah, I'm really happy, and uh, it's a shame that Ulf Anders, my uh, Swedish commander, went out against Jay, but that's racing, so now we're just going to do some work and come back. We'll see you in the next round. Thanks. It's been a little bit of a tough weekend for Yanni. You mentioned the motor that exploded in qualifying. They also broke a transmission in qualifying on Thursday. Got in touch with a local machine shop here. Two o'clock in the morning, they were machining parts to put the transmission back together so we could still be here racing. Thank you. You're trouble in an alcohol car with Lewis and LB. For those of you that don't understand how these things work, if that airline blows off during the run, it will not shift into high gear. More often than not, that cost you an engine, well, you not know, just a drag race. You know, Yanni Lindbergh's had no problems with that this weekend. He's been absolutely flying. He's got a tough competitor, a guy who's been doing it longer than most in the opposite lane, Jay Payne. He's also been meeting a lot of new friends. Mike Drake, round one, never raced him never before. Raced him. John Lombardo, round two, never raced him before. He has raced Jay twice. And believe it or not, he's never beaten Jay, as good as that car is. Jay's away first, but Yanni is streaking to the finish line. Wow, 548-6, 265-38.
my math is correct, that might even be top speed of the weekend. That is a very, very strong run out there. But Jay Payne blew the motor up. He had an advantage on the starting line. If Jay had been able to run a 60 or a 52 or three, he might have been able to pull it out. Look at the speed for Jay Payne, only 215 right there. Boom, bang, and he's just coasting. Jay Payne out, and Yanni Lindbergh finally Scratches Jay off of his to-do list. Yanni Lindbergh with lane choice courtesy of that 548 pass in just his second final. Are we going to see a first-time alcohol funny car winner today? We will if Yanni takes out the defending champ, Brian Howe, in the final. Top alcohol dragster up next was Sean Cowley taking on Ray Martin um, with a victorious Johnny Lindbergh moving on to the finals. Looking to get that first Wally at a national event. A 48 with a six gives you lane choice. I mean, how do you feel about that? Uh, this is amazing, you know. Me able to come to U.S. and race with the best of the best here. And, yeah, I like it. Like, and good friends, like, we broke the transmission in, on uh, Friday and we went to Curtis Beach up and he machined the housings and, you know, yes, good friends over here and support us with good stuff and uh, all the sponsors. I can't be thankful enough. You ready to ho hoist a Wally yet? Hopefully. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> and if it all goes to fruition for Yanni, you'd be looking at the 100th different alcohol funny car winner. He's got lane choice by a bunch. Firm handshake from Jay Payne. The very first Brad Anderson. That's Jay's father-in-law. The NHRA Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series is brought to you by Lucas Oil Stabilizer. Keeps old engine alive and keeps new engines new. Sun sets over the hills as you look down on Lake Puddingstone. Right next to Auto Club Raceway, Pomona, California, home of the Circle K Winter Nationals, the season opener of the Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series. Did you know that the Lucas Oil Drag Boat Racing Series actually used to race on Puddingstone Lake? Good stuff for sure. Well, that is Brian Haug in the new-look Camaro as the sun begins to set. You see Brackett Field and an airplane on final approach over the top end of the race course. Good-looking new Camaro. You see Brian's road to the final. Lane opposite, Yanni Lindbergh, the number one qualifier. The amazing thing that I found when I was looking at Brian Haug before this final round, he won this race a year ago, and that was his last victory. I can't believe he's been a calendar year now without being in the winner's circle. It's Drivers who've won... Excuse me there, Dave. Drivers have won from Sweden. How about Jimmy Alum last year in pro stock gotcha. at the four wide? And remember, Michael Gulquist, who raced in the pro mod class. Remember, he got a Wally, so I count that win. Opportunity and some history here, too, perhaps. There's no question that Yanni has had the faster car all weekend. He has also had the more temperamental car all weekend. But what might really be the X factor in this whole thing is whether Lewis Bloom gave Brian the 542 to yeah, Exactly. What is that history? Well, let's find out if it actually comes to fruition. We'll know in about 5.5 seconds when the light turns green. Might not take that long the way Yanni's car has been running. Lindbergh was late. But history will be made. You just witnessed the 100th different top alcohol funny car winner who also becomes the 200, excuse me, 23rd Winter Nationals winner with a big time speed run. And yet another top 10 elapsed time run in history in Alcohol Funny Car, 5.458, 267, 27. That's top speed of the meet. He needed a bunch of it. Brian had the head start, but 5.60 wasn't gonna get it done today. Yanni Lindbergh wins Pomona. But yeah, that'll make the trip back to Sweden pretty special. Looks like he might have wounded it one more time. By Sean Cowie. He will race Chris Demke, the champ, from a year ago. Brian Howe couldn't repeat. We'll find out if Chris Demke can. John Kernan. And Yanni, uh, picking up that first Wally, just an incredible weekend of performance for you guys. What does this mean to you? Everything, you know, been going from Sweden all the way here, and, you know, we've been racing last year, and finally I get to watch this Wally now. And so thankful for all my sponsors, you know, uh, Manta Push Ross, Manta Rocker Arms, Redline Oil, running a good Hoosier tires. Actually, old tires from last year, they're working perfect. And, uh, yeah, I can't more, be more thankful for everything. Congratulations. Thank you. Just to clarify something, he did not quite make the top 10 in a lap's time because, well, he's been rewriting that record book faster than I could keep up. Sorry, Dave. Well, I tell you.
One of the great races on tour. There's our winner in Top Alcohol Funny Car, Yanni Lindbergh. How about the fact that Chris Demke is now one behind Rick Santos for the most wins at the